I personally love the career renaissance that Lindsay Lohan is going through right now. She's just shamelessly starring in the most mid-rom-coms imaginable that you would see on the Hallmark Channel. This one was released for St. Patrick's Day this weekend on Netflix. The title is Irish Wish, and isn't it just so fitting for redhead Miss Lohan to star in a movie with this title? And <laughs> a journalist at Vulture has accused this film of being many sinister things. So here's the title of their review. Irish Wish is a crypto-fascist, AI-generated harbinger of doom. How dare they say this about my birthday twin? How dare they? They will not get away with this. They will not. So basically, it has a Freaky Friday type of plot line where she's jealous of her friend who's getting married in Ireland. And she's in she's part of the wedding. She's always had a thing for her friend's fiance. And she just is this nerdy writer girl who doesn't know that she's hot. And she just makes this wish that she could marry Paul Kennedy instead of her friend. And as per Freaky Friday, she actually does switch places with her friend and she wakes up all of a sudden and she's engaged to this dream man of hers. So here's what this journalist had to say about the movie. Now that I've seen Netflix's latest film, Irish Wish, I realize I have been but a hapless pawn in a larger socio-political <laughs> plot to maintain the status quo, to quell dissent, to replace much of the workforce with AI, to install a permanent Christian the theocratic dictator, and to make Ireland look weird for some reason. Irish Wish is a thinly veiled Trojan horse for conservative agenda, a crypto fascist work of art cluttered with right wing dog whistles and dialogue that could have only been written by a malevol malevolently programmed artificial intelligence. She continues, Lindsay Lohan's character Maddie exclusively wears one dress, which is apparently available in a variety of fabrics and prints, with a suspiciously high neckline and below the knee hemline that hints at the lurking specter of traditional family values. You know what a lot of this is, I think? A lot of it is, is people don't realize <laughs> just how much they're projecting their own kind of insanity onto a situation, right? I can go yeah. through and watch a movie one day and think something freaking insane but as long as i have the perspective in my brain I'm like, check yourself look i realize i'm not in the best heads <laughs> this, and this doesn't just happen with movies and stuff right sometimes i will watch stuff i can't think of an example off the top of my head but there are times i think absolutely insane shit while i'm watching things but i'm i've done enough kind of examine self-examination to know when i'm when i'm out there mm -hmm. when i'm really really out on the rocks and not not tethered to anything real yeah. It's about not actually typing it. Yeah, it's about not saying what you're thinking at all times. Gotta, I see all. 20, yeah, go ahead. Sent $20. Hello, Mary. Hello, Brett. According to my exceptional mathematical skills, they're not so exceptional. Episode 600 of PCC will be on Friday, April 26th. That is so soon. What? On a Friday. So mark your calendars, bitches. <laughs> The end is nigh. Let's go. Wait, wait why is it the end? Wait, does that mean like the show's getting canceled after episode 600? Did uh, we miss you know, the memo? Do you know, look, I live in constant fear that that's gonna, like, like literally, okay. Here's just the thing, one guys. morning, Tim is just gonna be like, F it. I am one of those people that doesn't know how to enjoy good things when they're happening. I only know how to prepare, sadly, for the inevitable fall. Mm -hmm. So I have a very hard time. I'm like, when is it all going to fall apart? When will I not be able to talk about Lindsay Lohan being a crypto fascist for my job? Okay? So I don't want to think about that. Hopefully, you know, by the end of April, we will still be syndicated. Ooh, I like this. Somebody so. says, uh, what is that? Nose Trap says, Brett's a crypto apathist. Yes, I am. I am. Oh, uh, that's not crypto. That's not cryptic at all. I'm you're, apathetic. You're I'm, very, I'm, very openly I'm and open. explicitly <laughs> apathetic about yeah. everything. So you're not a crypto apathist, I would say. Um, but yeah, they read into the fact that Lindsay Lohan's character is dressed in somewhat conservative outfits. Mm where they, they aren't showing all of her assets. They're like, so, she should have her titties hanging out that must to stop mean the patriarchy. That, 
they they called the stylist uh, a hands made handmaid's tale ass stylist for this. I pray Lindsay Lohan wrenches just... herself free from both her binding Netflix contract and its handmaid's tale ass stylist. So the Freaky Friday plot ensues. Maddie awakens suddenly in her new life where she is engaged to her dream man, Paul Kennedy. And he's an Irish man, okay? Paul is showering in her bathroom. She screams and covers her eyes, despite having wanted nothing else but to F Paul for years. She spends the rest of the movie assiduously avoiding all sexual contact, contact including kissing with her fiance. I wonder if that's Perhaps because, uh... because Lohan's husband co-produced this film. <sighs> so that is actually quite a good observation yep. um maddie winks at herself in the mirror saying you're marrying paul kennedy she falls asleep then beats the shit out of paul kennedy when he gets into bed to snuggle with her the glaring subtext is that maddie is a staunch virgin because she is not married so that's a right-wing dog whistle right there Remember because she's people... not hopping into bed with her friend's would be fiance and husband. 99 times out of 100, when somebody says it's a dog whistle, they're just kind of nutty. It's just like, no, no one told this journalist, like, hey, hey, stop it. Remember, Get when, some this, help. remember when this was a right wing dog whistle, guys? The, Does it have the to be underhanded? It, well, it has to be under, it's supposed to be below your waist. The, it's the circle game. Uh, oh. and, then, and then the okay hand symbol, remember that was, yeah. a, that was a dog whistle, right? So when that's a dog whistle and some guy who runs some business says it outside of his work truck and then gets fired, it's because you, my friend, are the mentally ill one, not the guy who accidentally made a hand gesture outside of his, uh, his car. We need to bring this back, by the way. Mm -hmm. Whatever happened to that? Uh, then people started saying it's for 666 and it's actually satanic. So I don't okay. know. Um, it's possible, says this journalist, that Irish Wish was made solely to get some kind of secret political message across international boundaries in deep code. Again, who are these people who have these like whiteboards with like the, the string pulled from place to place as they're writing these movies? It's a Netflix movie. You, like and you, if I see one thing about this person talking about QAnon, I'm going to lose my oh, shit. Oh no, she mentioned QAnon. No, I'm not saying, but so, so. She mentioned QAnon. So this, okay, here's the thing. If this is satire, yeah. it's brilliant and I've changed my mind entirely. This oh, person's yeah. a genius. Okay. Actually, we might have fallen for it. I like we it. might be duped, I like honestly. It. But the I'm journalists these days are so off the rails crazy that I, I really just wouldn't put it past a lot of them to be saying stuff like this. But they did name drop QAnon, in okay. fact. So, yeah, if it's possible to be racist about white Irish people, this movie is. <laughs> and then... After Freaky Friday, Wish Reversal returns everyone back to normalcy, back to the real world. Lindsay Lohan's character walks out of her best friend's wedding. Where are you going? He asks. And she says, to write my own story. Is, it's just very campy. Is that campy. a dog whistle? Is that a dog whistle? It's to, just Hallmark to the camp. To the Enlightenment yeah. period and the fact that white Christians are the one who have decided what literacy is? Okay. Mary, is that what it means? <laughs> I saw another think piece written about this movie, Irish Wish, um, from Film in Dublin. They asked, did Irish independence occur in Lindsay Lohan's Netflix film, Irish Wish? An urgent investigation. So <laughs> here, here they ask, why are these strains of rom-coms always so chaste? Did Lindsay Lohan have a nice time shooting in Ireland? Has God abandoned us to a hell of our own making? They are saying that uh, basically this movie undermines Irish patriotism and St. Patrick's mm -hmm. Day, the spirit of the holiday, because Actually, the hunky Irish guy that Lindsay Lohan wishes to marry, in real life, he's British. Uh, I do want to point out that this was making the rounds again because it was St. Patrick's Day the other day. Um, this, old, oh, this old one. Oh, wow. Yes. Love history. I love learning about history. So true. Yeah. I'm, my name is Gen Gemini, and yes. <laughs> I'm teaching you about Irish history. Um, so, yeah, the guy, is it cultural appropriation for 
a British person to play an Irish person. No, in a because they TV do this show. All, they do this all the time in movies and television. Irish people have to put on British accents. British but people have to put on Irish accents. You know that they Irish have accents. a troubled history. Okay. Uh, you know that they have a fraught history. Sean Connery, together. Pierce Brosnan. These actors have had to put on British accents for years. Oh, and then also Lindsay's. Uh, marriage to said hunky Irish guy is then usurped by a hunky British guy. Yes. So really, this is putting Irish men in the cuck chair, and they're getting cucked by the British guys. Seems reminiscent Again, of the I troubles. I want to know at what point during pre-production all of this was decided by Netflix. Um, I'm sure that Netflix secretly has a crypto fascist agenda. And if you are doubting that, then you're definitely in on the plot with them. So that's, it's settled. This is it's cultural settled. colonization on behalf of Netflix. And I won't stand for it. I won't. Do you have any Irish ancestry? I don't, I'm Croatian and Polish. Just a Slav, just, just straight just, up Slav. Yep, that's me. I'm, I'm the original oppressed class. I have some <laughs> Irish ancestry and honestly, I'm offended. You should be. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.